Kalau kibah dipercaya banyak orang, maka mereka akan saling mempunyai. At the beginning of the movie, we see a group of students discussing the topics for the next month's school magazine edition. Ulfa suggests they should publish about the professor who has an affair with his female student that Okta investigated. Arga says she has been absent for two weeks, to which Yola asks Ulfa and Furley to ask Okta as they live in the same boarding house. Then their ordered chicken food arrives and here we learn that Furley is a vegetarian. Later, when Ulfa and Furley reach their boarding house, Opie tells them that their friend Alka is screaming. When they reach there, Dina tells them she screamed out loud but is calm now, to which Furley says let it be and they will ask her tomorrow, but Umi says what if she is calm because she is dead. They then decide to break the door, but the door opens on its own and they all get scared of this. They ask Furley to go in first and push her in. She finds Okta's room cold and she is sitting crying in a corner. She asks her if she is sick, to which she says no and that she is everywhere. She then tells her there is an envelope for Arga there. Furley asks if it's about the professor, but Okta asks her not to talk about it or she will hear it, and she begs her to take the envelope away from her. The next day, Furley goes to her home and is very happy to meet her parents, when Yolo calls her and asks if she can cover for her for their mosque sacrifice coverage as she is not feeling well. Furley says she can't, but her parents ask her to help her friend, and someday she will help her when she needs it. We then see her at the mosque, where she is not comfortable, and only then Alpha also comes there. Alpha shows her Yola's Instagram story, seeing which Furley gets very angry as she told her that she is sick. Then suddenly she yawns and something enters her mouth. She starts feeling dizzy and says she has not had lunch yet. Now when she is going to eat something, goat's blood spills on her and she runs away screaming. She rushes to the campus washroom and starts washing herself, but only then she notices that the skin on her face is peeling off, due to which she gets terrified, but the next moment everything becomes normal. Now that night we see Okta praying when someone grabs her hand and she gets terrified. She then calms herself down and continues praying. But soon after she gets haunted by an entity, and when she tries to flee, that entity rises behind her, and when Okta turns, it attacks her. We then see Ami and Yolo dancing to a TikTok song when Okta comes there, and Ami asks her to join them. However, they notice that something is wrong with her and she starts moving toward them. Suddenly Ami's eyes go all white and she knocks Okta down, and only then Opie also comes there and asks Dina to help Alka. He then makes Ami sit on the chair and Yolo takes Alka to her room. They then go to Okta's room and notice that she is stinking like a dead body. Opie asks Dina to come outside with him and let Ami take care of Okta. Now after they leave, Ami sits there and prays to God and spirits to vanish her smell, and then her eyes go all white again. Outside, Dina asks Opie what she is doing inside, to which he tells her that Ami is from Mataram ancestry, and since the time of her ancestor, they are helped by a jinn named Kadam. There are some jinns that help humans and there are some jinns that destroy. Here Ami asks the jinn who is he. Suddenly Okta gets up and stands on the bed, and Ami understands it is Ifrit. She then shows its real face to her and welcomes her to her world. Ami asks her what does she want, to which she says something in another language. Ami asks her to leave, but she starts licking her and says her smell is really good. Ami orders her to leave, but she says she can't as her power is higher than hers. Ami pushes her back, but this enrages her and she climbs on the wall and then attacks her. Suddenly Opie and Dina hear some sounds from inside the room and when they enter, they find Okta on the bed and Ami sitting beside her. She says she is fine and Dina tries to wake Okta up, but Ami asks her to let her rest. Later, Furley's parents return home and her dad tells her that her mom slipped on the pedestrian bridge. Now while applying medicine to her, Furley apologizes and says that she should accompany them. She tells them that Yola lied to her and she starts talking bad about her, but her mother stops her and says she should not talk like this about someone. Her dad asks her what's the proof that Yola lied to her, to which she said social media. Now that night when she returns to boarding house, she sees Okta's dad taking her from there, and she tells Furley that she is still here and they all need to move away from this house. Furley asks who she is talking about, but her father takes her from there. Ami then says she wants to talk to her about something, and then Opie calls everyone else down there. Ami then asks them to do prayers more solemnly and Dina to attend the church more often, and that their actions and words should be good. Now the next day at school, Furley says she has something to do, and asks them to give the envelope to Arga and tell him it's Okta's investigation. After they leave, Furley goes to Yola and tells her she doesn't like her using her like yesterday. She should have accompanied her dad to the hospital but she couldn't because she covered it for her and because of her, her mom got into an accident. Yola asks her why she is accusing her. She was really sick. 
However, Furley doesn't believe her and starts leaving, but Yola stops her and asks her why she is accusing her, to which she says because on Eid, she preferred to check in at a hotel to do her job instead of praying. Now Yola feels very insulted and unable to answer her, after which she starts crying in the library. Just then Reno comes there and asks her what's wrong. She tells him Furley defamed her in front of many people. Reno says maybe she didn't mean it, to which she says that's just the way she is. He then says that Alpha gave him this envelope and asks her to give it to Arga if she meets him. After he leaves, Yola checks that report, and then something enters her mouth when she yawns. Later, Furley hears someone calling her name in the class, but when she asks Alpha, she says nobody called her. She asks her to look in front, and then Furley notices that the teacher is teaching verses from al hujurate saying talking about things that bring down someone else is the most dangerous sin. Later, Alpha and Dina tell her they have been calling her but she never answers, to which she says they were in the class together. They ask her to check her phone, and Furley says she must have forgotten the phone in the class, but she gets shocked to see the condition of the class, and Dina and Ulfa are also not there. She gets scared seeing this, but enters the class to find her phone, and only then a notification rings on her phone, and she sees the photo of Jin in it. But then she hears Ulfa's voice in it and she tells her that they are waiting for her at the magazine's office. Here Arga reads the report made by Okta which he doesn't like, and he says this is not consistent with the journalism principles. But Yola says it's all true as Okta herself interviewed the student and they have the recording of it to which Arga says all journalists must have a conscience. Now when Furley reaches there, she asks them if it's really the magazine office, and Arga asks her if she is okay. She then sits there, and Arga tells them about the coronavirus of Wuhan that is suspected to emerge from the illegal meat. He wants to investigate Indonesia's market, especially markets that sell uncommon meat. He asks Reno if he can do it tomorrow, to which he says he has to attend a family event tomorrow. Arga then asks Furley, and she agrees to it. Later that night, her dad tells her that her mom made her favorite veggie soup and fried tempeh, and her mother asks her why she is eating meat. Furley gets shocked to see this and rushes out of the house to vomit, and gets terrified seeing worms crawling in her vomit. But when her mom comes there, it all disappears. The next day she and Arga goes to the meat market where they meet a man named Subic. Subic brings them to an underground market and tells him that they have snakes, dogs, and spiders and all are alive. Arga asks him if it's okay for him to take a look around. To which he says yes. Arga then asks Furley to look around and record everything in their hidden camera, and after a while Furley sees them putting a dog in a sack and tries to stop them. But Arga catches her and tries to calm her down, and they kill that dog right in front of them. She then takes out the raw meat of that dog from that sack and starts eating it. But it turns out to be a hallucination and then she starts screaming and runs away from there. She tells Arga that she can't do this job. She is traumatized because those animals are not supposed to be treated like that. Arga calms her down and says they can go now. Later at school, they notice student passing comments on Furley asking if is it fun doing with the professor and calling her professor mistress. Only then Din comes there and asks her if she read the latest edition of her magazine. And after reading the article, Furley understands that Yola has done this. Meanwhile, we see Yola backbiting about Furley with her friends and suddenly she asks them if they are smelling something. They say yes and it smells like a carcass and it's getting more and more pungent. They tell her it's she who is smelling, but she says she can't smell bad, and only then someone calls her, and she goes straight and sits in the canteen. Now everyone there also starts getting disturbed by the smell and then Arga comes there and asks her why she published the article and changed the names, and strangely he could not smell it. She swear that she didn't do anything. He then orders some sausages and asks her to eat them with him. She grabs a knife, and only then Furley and Arga reach there, and when she goes to confront her, she gets shocked to see that Yola is slicing her fingers, and then she eats it. Arga comes there and wakes her up and Yola gets terrified seeing what she was doing. She is then taken to the hospital, and Alpha says she didn't know that Yola has some kind of mental disorder. Later, Furley meets Okta at a cafe, and tells her that she feels like there is a connection between herself, her and Yola. Okta says she only knows one thing, that they have made a mistake. She forced herself to make a sensational article that will make her look good in front of Arga and anyone. All the proof in the article is true, but she added something to spice up the story. She adds up that the student in the article did an abortion because she was scared of the publication of the article, and since then she feels like she is disrupted by her. Furley asks her who, but she leaves there asking her to take care. Furley then gets a call from Arga, who tells her that on the way to the hospital Yola was possessed and then she ran away. Later, she tells Ami and Opie that for a few days, she is hallucinating. Now Ami reveals that Okta and Furley are being disturbed by a djinn because they are doing a very dangerous sin called Gibba. Furley asks what jinn is disturbing her, to which she says Ifrit, one of the oldest jinn in the world. Furley says she doesn't feel she has sinned, to which Ami says that is why Gibba is more dangerous compared to any other sin. 
Later, Furley reads articles about Ifrit, and we see something entering her mouth as she yawns. She then goes to the washroom where she sees some black liquid coming out of the commode which splashes on her face, and when she tries to clean her face, she finds herself in that underground meat market. There she sees a woman licking the meat, and when she turns, Furley gets terrified seeing her. Meanwhile, Okta comes to the housing and says Furley is in danger and they need to help her. Opie says let him wake up Ummy, and when he looks back, he gets shocked to see that Okta is not there. He then starts looking for her and we see her behind him possessed by Ifrit, and then she tells him that she will kill Furley after him and she kills him by decapitating him. But only then he wakes up and realizes that it was a nightmare, and he wakes up Ami and tells her that Furley is in danger. Here Furley finds her mother inside a cage and she tries to free her. She manages to break the lock but it's Ifrit that comes out instead of her mother and then she also wakes up from her sleep. She then again goes to the washroom where she encounters possessed Yola, who asks her if she can eat her. Furley flees there and calls Arga and tells him that Yola is at the campus. She then hides in a classroom and Yola also comes there smelling her. She grabs a chair and sits there and says that she is hungry. Meanwhile, Arga and Reno reach the campus and start looking for Furley. Here Yola finds her and starts licking her. However, before she could eat her, Reno pushes her, but she bites off his arm and he knocks her down. They then bring Yola to the magazine room and Ami and others also join them. Suddenly the door shuts and the room starts filling with smoke. Furley is then attacked by Ifrit and all the other manages to come out of that room. Yola also wakes up normally and as they were about to leave, Ami asks where is Furley. They all rush back into the room and find her unconscious there. They put her on the table and Ami checks and tells them that the djinn took Furley to its world. There is one way to save her and she has to enter her soul. We then see Furley in Jin's world where Ifrit haunts her and the magazine room starts shaking. The Kadam Jin possesses Ami and asks Opie to help him with his prayers. Here Furley falls into a pond and the Jin begins dragging her inside. But only then Ami holds her hands and tries to pull her out of the pond. But then Ifrit comes out of the water and as Furley starts reading prayers, it closes her mouth. Here everyone starts chanting prayers to give strength to Ami and she finally manages to defeat Ifrit and brings Furley back to this world. The next day, Furley and Yola apologize to each other for their wrongdoings, and Yola tells her that she was really sick that day. That was an old photo back when she went on a holiday with her family. Reno and Yola then leave for the hospital for treatment, and the trio starts gossiping about them. Dina stops them and asks what they are doing now as Gibba, and they get scared. But then Opie goes to them and tells them that if they accidentally do Gibba like that, they must pray for God's forgiveness. He tells them to repeat a prayer after him and then they leave there and the movie ends here. Please like and subscribe to my channel and click the bell icon never to miss new video updates. Thanks for watching.